when I gave my topic and description to digital workplace experience in this March, we didn't expect this pandemic will impact the United States and also some other countries so much. Six months later, not only we have been forced to reimagine how we learn and work, but we also embrace the new normal for quite a while. Uh, the good side is actually digital transformation or digitalization is the foundation of AI and automation. My usage of AI, this word here, is actually a broader scope with AI techniques combined digital technologies to create new digital capabilities. There are so many emerging technologies are available right now. So a lot of people call now we are in this the fourth industrial revolution. There are already too many AI applied in different industries. Just to give a little bit uh, examples, in hospital and hotels, robots have been deployed to do a lot of human jobs. They can minimize human touch. And in hospital, uh, actually machine learning and deep learning can do image-based diagnosis with higher accuracy than human doctors do. They also been used to predict the risk of patients used in the development of treatments and vaccines for COVID-19. Researchers have proved that using AI to do protein search for drug discovery can improve up to six orders of magnitude. In insurance industry, it can automate customer service and also automate the review process for insurance claims. In banks, it can help decide credit lines, detect credit card transaction fraud, and also in uh, anti-money laundering. Anti-money laundering could be a very heavy cost for global banks. For a bank, there could be tens of thousands of staff involved in anti-money laundering. Using machine learning and network analysis can reduce the cost by up to 40%. In IT security, also engineers can use AI-based solution to monitor risks. And this kind of uh, action can bring more dynamic response to hackers. And also AI can keep learning after every event is solved. These are just a few examples. In all, uh, AI can bring us productivity, accuracy, and reduce cost. A very quick explanation on AI. Uh, the first approach, symbolic. This has very long history. Is we really teach machine about terms, ontologies, definitions, facts, rules, and so AI can do the logical reasoning. Uh, an application is like an expert system. The second approach, non-symbolic approach. It just become possible because of the advance in the computing power in recent years. Actually, we don't know how it works in those massive amount of data. So we use a lot of algorithms to find the patterns insights from the data. And in this non-symbolic approach, there's a subset called machine learning. In, some, in the machine learning, there's a subset called deep learning. Deep learning is very useful to handle massive unstructured data. If you have simple data like only gender numbers, names, and frequencies, then you can just, just use traditional analytics. If you have rich data, like video, audio, comments uh, from different social media sites, you have massive amount of data, complicated relationships with between data and also maybe abstract meaning, like a user's behavior, preferences, and also uh, habits that use deep learning is very useful. And we have seen a lot of deep learning being used in marketing domain. Robotic process automation, called RPA, 
it can do repetitive tasks for human workers. So we can ask it to do, for example, process and structural data based on the same rule, right? Uh, process mining can look over employee's shoulder and identify the improvements based of the process growth. These are just two tools in the enterprise automation. Now they also combine with AI capabilities. In just this year, IBM, Microsoft, and Google all build up their RPA offerings by quick acquisitions. So you can see there's a very strong need. In the factory, the floor, the equipment, there are sensors that can collect data, then orchestrate the process flow and utilize resources automatically. If there's an algorithm that predicts there will be a breakdown in an equipment, then it will trigger an alert and trigger an intervention. This is called predictive maintenance or preventive maintenance and has become very important. Also, digital twin. Digital twin is a digital representation for an asset and equipment or the whole factory so that engineers actually can do real-time simulation to find better plans to adjust the settings of the real world. Uh, for example, Tesla has a digital twin for every car manufactured by them. Every day, this uh, miles of uh, data, like driving data, being collected and sent back to the factory to further optimize the software. Uh, this digital twin also being used beyond manufacturing, like they can be used in healthcare too. Program trading is not new for people in industry in of uh, financial. Uh, now these uh, high frequency trader, they are using FPGA AI chips and advanced algorithms to take in process massive market data and noises without human intervention and respond to do the trading in real time. The delay is uh, hundreds of nanoseconds. Not only that, Goldman Sachs using an AI research engine to take in a lot of news and reports, read those reports and create briefings and highlight factors that could influence stock prices. NASDAQ also use a third party tool, a third party service to do financial research. Uh, this third party is a kind of semantic knowledge database. And this engine, uh, they crawl through the whole internet, digest all the elements on all website, web pages, 24 seven, nonstop. And this service is actually not expensive. Nike and Adidas all use it to detect websites selling counterfeit shoes. So um, Northwestern University scientists, they also have a similar research engine to do financial research. After the onset of COVID-19, they turn it into helping scientists to comb through the incredible amount of publications on COVID-19. Last week, I checked there are 130,000 documents about COVID-19 in this database. There's no single human can make sense of this kind of data among, right? In chip design, this is from the EDA tool vendor synopsis. Uh, actually, you see, uh, you, this is from Samsung's uh, experiments. They proved that uh, this AI helping chip design can have huge time saving and huge human resources saving. Actually, the performance is better. Uh, the reason is just that the consideration is just too complicated. In an average chip, there are at least tens of millions of transistors on a chip, and the possibilities could be trillions. This also applies in the machine learning process itself. Um, Google proves that 
actually deep learning neural nets can help design neural nets. The uh, professional term is neural architecture search, and they call it auto ML. Now, based on this auto ML, we see a lot of automatic machine learning products available that automate a lot of steps in machine learning process, including data preparation, feature engineering, model selection, training, hyperparameter optimization, model performance monitoring after deployment, the overall optimization according to business goals. So this enable average person like you and me can use machine learning to solve our problems and also save a lot of time for data scientists. Of course, AI can be beneficial for many aspects of HR and talent development because it's all about problem modeling and solving with data. With the automatic machine learning product, actually HR professional can start to use machine learning to answer a lot of their questions. Um, I'll give some example. Sometimes you might need to work with outside uh, service providers because for more advanced modeling, they will need a lot more expertise beyond uh, the average uh, HR professionals. But uh, data is the foundation of all this. IBM collects uh, employees' digital footprints from 26 data sources and continuously support the development and performance of each employee by smart assistance, intelligent workflows, and digital learning ecosystem. Schneider Electric, they have implemented an open talent market inside their company. And it was a success before the COVID-19, but after the COVID-19, it's become more useful to help the workforce respond to the emerging needs of because of the crisis. Uh, so it gives the workforce agility. MCI Group also has implemented an AI recommendation engine to support the employees' learning. After the crisis onset, it has been asked to help with their clients use the AI recommendation engine to engage their own audience. So in all these three examples, AI all play a critical role. So AI adoption is the more recent digital transformation trend. There are four types of AI adoption, buying an application, building on a cloud platform, internal development, or uh, outsource development. The first one has the lowest barrier, but users still need to learn how to leverage AI. Uh, it's not plug and play. So if leaders want to turn this uh, AI implementation from siloed simple purpose implementation to a broader transformation, they might need to invest in these three building blocks for AI, including data, infrastructure, and talent. From our interviews with a lot of enterprise leaders, um, some common points for success for digital transformation involve uh, strategy, support from C-level, breaking functional silos, good coordination between different departments, build the right culture. So communication is very important. We believe that there is no one size fits all answer. So lessons learned between uh, companies, this kind of exchange could be very beneficial. What do you think about the number one barrier for AI adoption? According to O'Reilly's report, companies' culture and also the leaders does not yet recognize the needs for AI. I think there are several reasons. The major first one is trust. It's all about risk, right? The top risk, number one, is data security. Will my data be safe? Will my business secret data be safe? 
this is technical issue, but also there's a, a people factor in this. The second is the trust in the AI's capabilities. Uh, there are a lot of prep AI products, but even for good AI products, they still need to help stakeholders understand its value and how to evaluate this kind of AI adoption, how to choose to identify the appropriate business use cases. And data quality matters. If you feed bad data into the AI, the result will not be good. Uh, even worse, it could induce bias and that could impact human rights. Even AI model is deployed after that the data shift could degrade the quality of the model performance. So you still need to keep monitoring the model performance. So you see, there are a lot of gaps here we need to fill in. Uh, we have seen new job functions are created, like ASIC compliance manager, algorithm forensic analyst, or more open explainer, trainer. Um, the second factor is skill gap. Intel spent two years interviewing more than 400 manufacturers and won that. The skill gap is the top number one problem in industry 4.0 transformation. IBM also told us that kind of transformation, you will need to have everyone from executives to every employees to learn about this new technology. And the most basic is data literacy and digital literacy. The highlight is the same uh, with what Intel highlight, data literacy and digital literacy. So we have been in this consulting experience for a long time, we have seen technology adoption is actually harder than a lot of people think. Wouldn't it be great that AI can help us with these issues? Like help fill in skill gap, help nudge people's behavior, and know our needs better to, so that to serve our, us better and then to augment our performance. That is what is happening right now. Imagine there's an app that can integrate everything people need to perform better, including learning, business data, which is automatically collected, insights from data, which is automatically extracted by AI, lessons from previous cases, base case processes, which is set up by experts or managers, and the real-time men mentoring. Uh, Furthermore, AI keeps capturing testing or tribal knowledge under the hood. This kind of AI application we've seen a lot in sales enablement and also some in clinical trial. To reimagine how work can be done better by human machine collaboration, we will need to understand both Strength, right? We want to combine the best strength from both sides. We already know AI can store unlimited data with very low cost. They can compute super fast, so they can process huge amount of data, find patterns, make predictions. If we teach them rules, they actually can do reasoning very good, very fast. But if we teach them the wrong thing, they could go wrong super fast, right? So what we teach them to do is really important. And that's the design. And machines cannot design themselves. That's still humans work. Also, like adopting any new tools, cost-benefit analysis is needed. Air adoption must bring economic benefits. Um, deep learning is fancy, uh, but it's very expensive. So if you have small data, and you have more uh, expert, expertise, then you don't need deep learning. And for some uh, bigger, massive amount of data, you just need deep learning. 
So you need to pick the right tools to do this cost benefit, makes sense. Many AI components are available for developing new applications. So we will suggest dissect jobs into granular steps and skills and design collaboration between human and machine by leveraging the best strengths from both sides. So here I want to talk a little bit about skill modeling. Skill modeling is not only useful for the kind of design between human and machine, it's also important for personalized learning at scale. We are talking about the design thinking. This to design personalized learning at scale, we still need humans to do that kind of design. So this is where learning engineering comes in. Uh, we at IG Poly Icicle, uh, it's all about learning engineering. Learning engineering is a process and practice that applies the learning sciences using human-centered engineering design methodologies and data informed decision making to support learners and their development. So learning sciences, we have accumulated a lot of learning sciences from past decades. For example, repetitive spacing learning and also test effect. Using this kind of uh, learning sciences and put into engineering methodologies from context identify problem, design, instrumentation, implementation, data analysis, to build a, this kind of data-driven approach and get feedback and get improvement. This is a process of learning engineering, but it's also very similar with lean startup methodologies. We will encourage enterprises to build up skills, tools, and also cultures to allow humans to do experiments, to build MVP, to collect feedback, and build POC when they are validated. And to put to scale, the reward could be huge. And also, there are too many knowledge silos. So enterprises should build up open innovation to tap into talent inside the company and also outside the company. Build up the collaboration between talents in the older ecosystems that will advance faster. So three takeaways, very quick. First, we should aim at augmented intelligence. Second, upskilling and leadership. We all need to learn how this new tool works and then break silos to form new models. Six, uh, third, new organizational capabilities. In order to enable a lot of employees can reimagine how jobs get done with AI and automation and do experiments. Also build open innovation to get collective intelligence from internal and external ecosystems. So we invite you to submit your idea of how learning and work can be done by the collaboration of human and machines. Thank you for your attention.